Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Farming Simulator 25 tips and tricks video. I was just talking to Walter, Grandpa, about how in Farming Simulator 22, we had productions added. And he was telling me that, well, he's, he's heard, he's heard a thing or two that possibly Giant Software has doubled down on productions with respect to Farming Simulator 25. And man, oh man, have they, because... I've, I've done something, and I've reached the production limit. I have placed all the productions that are placeable. I've placed all the greenhouses that are placeable. I've placed some of the sell points that are placeable. And I've run up to an issue. I can't place any more. I've placed all that are allowed until we get some sort of mod that ups the limit. So Giants has significantly doubled down on not only the productions that are available, but the options with respect to the production buildings. So on Riverbend Springs, there are 14 productions pre-placed. There are way over 14 productions that you can buy, and there's multiple bakeries that you can buy. So just with respect to placeables, and what we have here on Riverbend Springs, there are four different bakery options. So we have the bakery that's pre-placed on the map, and then we have a bakery we can place, a second bakery we can place, and a third placeable bakery. So we have four different options. They all produce the same thing. They just visually look a little different. And what's awesome about that? Well, that means that we have, in the future, a lot of potential flexibility with respect to mod maps. There's three bakery buildings that modders could simply pull out of the game and put into their own map for a little bit of variety. Farm Sim 22, I think we had two bakeries. We had an American bakery and we had the European bakery. That was it. We also have with Farm Sim 25, little miniature, little miniature productions. They're smaller, they take less inputs, they make less outputs, but they're cheaper. So they're great for just getting into the work. Let me go here into build mode. Holy cow. Yep. Like I told you, I did a thing. So one field wasn't big enough. Two fields wasn't big enough. Three fields wasn't big enough. Nor was four. How about five? Five fields. Yep. Five fields was big enough to contain my, my craziness. So let's go back here. And let's talk about what we've got going on here. So if we go to factories, we have three biogas plants. Pretty typical BGAs. We've seen these. These are basically our Farm Sim 22 biogas plants. We have the big biogas plant. We have the smaller biogas plant. And then the smallest biogas plant. Pretty straightforward there, right? Then we have, well, we've got a bakery over here. Right, for $150,000. We also have a second bakery. Let me get down here to it. For $150,000. But that's not the only bakery we have. We have a third bakery, this little miniature bakery, for $36,000. In fact, all of these little miniature bakeries, or not miniature bakeries, all these miniature productions are basically $36,000 each. So let's go and take a look here in the production chains menu. Let's start with Riverbend Springs and work our way from there. We have the included bakery on Riverbend Springs. It's gonna make bread from either flour or rice flour and cakes from either flour or rice flour and for cakes, we also need sugar, milk, eggs, butter, and strawberries. For the biogas plant, well, we're going to make electric charge, methane, and digestate out of either manure, silage, slurry, or sugar beet cut. Our canning factory is going to make either canned peas, jarred green beans, kimchi, which is going to be Napa cabbage, garlic, spring onion, and chili peppers, noodle soup which is going to be flour and eggs, 
noodle soup with rice flour, which is going to be rice flour and eggs. Preserved beetroot. Preserved carrots. Preserved parsnips. Rice bag from long grain rice. So to make rice rolls. I think of these as rice cakes myself. We also can make rice cakes from regular rice. We can make bags of rice from regular rice or long grain rice. And then we can make bags of spinach with our spinach. Our carpentry is going to take planks or logs and make furniture. Our cement factory is going to accept stones and is going to make cement brick, cement bags, or roof plate. Now there's something about the cement factory and I want to go over here and talk about it. And that is on Riverbend Springs. We also have a dredging boat. And the dredging boat basically just piles up stone. And we can take that stone and put it right into our cement factory. Well, if you're playing on a map that doesn't have this capability, you're not left out. Because we can place a debris crusher down and this debris crusher basically does the same thing think of the iron ore mine and the platinum expansion we basically get stones that pile up over here on the right so here is that placeable debris crusher that i was talking about we just have stones piling up here in this bunker we can come in here and collect the stones and do whatever we want We have a cooper, which is going to make barrels, bathtubs, and buckets from either long planks or regular planks. It's also going to output wood chips. We have our grain mill, which is going to take barley, oat, sorghum, and wheat and make flour from those. Or long grain rice and make rice flour. Or regular rice to make rice flour. Our oil mill is now going to be able to make not only canola, olive, and sunflower oil, but it's going to be able to bring us rice oil with either long grain rice or regular rice. Our paper factory is going to accept wood and make carton rolls or paper. The rope maker is going to take cotton or wool and make rope. Our sawmill is going to accept wood and make planks, long planks, prefab walls, or wooden beams. The spinnery is going to accept cotton or wool. And make fabric. The tailor is going to take that fabric and make clothing. And those are the ones that are pre placed. Now let's come back up here. Like I mentioned we have three additional bakeries. They're all going to be able to make basically the same thing. They just look a little bit different. And I really like this concept of this little miniature, miniature production. We're going to look at all of those here in a moment. We have our three biogas plants that we can place down. They all do the same thing just produce different output quantities. We have two, two additional carpentries. We have a longer building here, and then we have the smaller shed. We have the cement factory that we can place down. Again, it's going to be cement brick, cement bags, and roof plate. We have our cereal factory. We're going to make chocolate cereal. Interesting. Honey, chocolate, oat, corn. We're going to make cereal from long grain rice. Honey and long grain rice. Cereal with raisins. Honey, raisins, oat, and corn. Or cereal with rice, honey, and rice. As opposed to honey and long grain rice. Okay. We have a placeable cooper. Again, for our barrels, bathtubs, and buckets. We have one, two, and three dairies. Now, the dairies have been expanded quite significantly as you can see so they're going to accept incoming buffalo milk goat milk cow milk and sugar and as a result they're going to be able to produce bottled buffalo milk buffalo mozzarella butter cheese chocolate goat milk goat cheese and bottled milk so our mozzarella is going to be goat milk mozzarella butter Cheese, chocolate's going to add our sugar, goat cheese. Yep, pretty straightforward. We have a grain mill that we can place. Going to do the same thing that the 
base game free place grain mill is going to do. And we can get a little miniature grain mill as well. We have multiple grape processors. We have a small one and we have a large one that we can put down to make grape juice and raisins. And then we have a greenhouse for our rice saplings. We're going to take water and we're going to produce rice, sap rice saplings from that. And then we can take those rice saplings and put them in our planter and plant regular rice, or we can sell the rice sapling pallets. Then we have multiple greenhouses. Now the greenhouses have been expanded once again. We have the ability to do chili peppers, garlic, lettuce, Napa cabbage, spring onion, strawberries, and tomatoes. And all of those are simply going to require water, and then they're gonna output their various produce. We also have mushroom greenhouses, and we have three different sizes of each. So we have a small, medium, and large greenhouses, and small, medium, large mushroom greenhouses, water, and we can either make enoki mushrooms or oyster mushrooms. We also have either a tarp greenhouse or a glass greenhouse. I'm going to show you those here in a little bit. We have an oil mill, just like the one that is pre-placed on the map. And we have a small oil mill. We have our paper factory, and this is very akin to the platinum expansion paper factory. We have our piano manufacturer that we can put down that's on Zilonka. We're going to take planks and make a piano out of that. We have our potato processor, potato chips with either canola oil, olive oil, or sunflower oil. We have our preserved food factory. We have a small preserved food factory. We have the one pre-placed, and we have the one that is from Zilonka. We have our rope manufacturer. That is a different building than what is pre-placed. This one is super long. I'm going to show you here in a little bit. We have our sawmill. We have a miniature sawmill. We have our soup factory from Zilonka. And it is a bit simpler than the soup factory or the canning factory, I guess, that we have here pre-placed on the map. We have multiple spinnery options, a small one, and then two larger buildings. We have our sugar mill. We have a miniature sugar mill. And we have multiple tailor shop options as well. So let's go and kind of just take a look at some of these. Here we have our paper mill. Here we have a spinnery option. An alternate tailor. That's our secondary bakery. There is our base game tailor that's here on the map. Here we have another cooperage. We have a sugar mill. Here we have our grape processor. The giant grape bunch there on the top. Our cereal factory. Another carpentry option. Let me go show you one of the most cutest little dairies you've ever seen in your life. This thing's so small, it's going to fit literally almost anywhere. But before we get to that, this is a placeable cement factory. Look at this little thing. It's like a little triangle building. It'll fit in any corner. So we have our front. Then we have our dump point. We have a bottle of milk on top. And then we have our pallet point on top. I'm trying to remember what this is. Okay, this is a small mill. We've already talked about those. We've got our tailor.
This is going to be our dairy from Zilonka. And this is our rope production. Super long building. Now we got to go back down here because this is where the rest of the buildings are. We have our spinnery from Zilonka. This is going to be our potato processing facility. We have our soup canning from Zilonka and our soup factory from Zilonka. Zoop, zoop, zoop. And then we have the miniature productions. And I really like this idea because I like to play a little bit more realistic. I don't like to play with lots of money. I like to play slow and typically smaller. So these smaller productions really do fit within my overall desired play style. So this is a miniature tailor shop. Look at that. It's just a little shed. Where we have our pallet spawn point. We have our dump point and our interactive point inside. This is a little miniature sugar mill. How about a little miniature spinnery? Where we're going to be able to make our fabric. Miniature sawmill. Isn't that neat? Miniature oil mill. Grape processor. This is our grain mill. Our dairy. Miniature carpentry shop. Our preserved food factory. Now this one, I remember seeing this screenshot and I was like, what the heck is this thing? And I knew it looked like over here, this is some sort of packaging or wrapping station. And then we've got a little miniature bakery. And then what's even neater is modders can take these, right? They can go into Giants Editor and they can pull out the assets to these and literally stick them in anything else. And we have now endless, endless varieties of productions. We have our rice sapling greenhouse. Now the greenhouses are going to be in a different section entirely, right? So three thousand dollars will get you this rice sapling greenhouse. Nine thousand dollars will get you this small tarp greenhouse. Eighteen thousand dollars for the medium one. Thirty-six thousand for the large. Then we go to a glass greenhouse. Thirteen five hundred for the small. Twenty-seven thousand for the medium, and fifty-four thousand for the large. Then we move over to our mushroom greenhouses, 9,000 for the small, 18 for the medium, and the large is over here at 36. We have our piano production located right here, right? We just simply deliver planks and inside here, they will produce and build a piano. And then once it's built, it will be sold. We have a couple of BGAs and I want to come over here because, well, it's fine that we can produce things, but we also have some placeable sell points and some of these have been miniaturized as well. So over here, we have a large biomass heating plant. The biomass heating plants where we're going to sell logs and wood chips. And then we have a miniature biomass heating plant right here. How about a stone crusher, right? This is a miniature debris crusher. You can put this literally anywhere. Or you can go with the big boy if you want to do that. We have one of these at the starting farm on this map. It's a little 
produce station from farm to table. And as you deliver goods, they'll fill out the various crates and boxes here and sell over time. Maybe you want to upgrade to a slightly larger farmer's area. Well, we've got this shed right here. Right, We have our dump point. Then as we do that, then things will fill into here. And then you're not left without having to be able to put down your own farmer's market. While we have a farmer's market pre-placed on Riverbend Springs, you can put one of these down on any map that you should so want to. And as you put product down, well, they'll fill out this display case area. On this side, we have our dump point for our products, products or produce and things. And over here, we have a dump point more for our bulk grain. And we're going to find those under the same menu here under selling points. Right, our biomass heating plant, our little one, 36,000. 7,500 for the small debris crusher. 10K for the big debris crusher. 10K for the small kiosk. 70K for the bigger kiosk. And 180K for this big farmer's market sell point. And that's, that's basically my quick run through. I wish I had the capability of loading all the productions up, but that just wasn't really within the means to uh, get this video out to you guys. The purpose of this video is really to show off the large variety of the production buildings that are available, not only pre-placed like here on Riverbend Springs, but also for placement by you, the player. And the fact that we have four different bakeries we could put down, three large bakeries, and then one little miniature bakery really is neat. So that means that if we had space here on our farm and we had cows, well, we could put a little dairy operation in just beside our, our cow area. And then we can take that, those dairy products, and put them out here at the street to sell to our customers as they drive by. Same thing we can do with greenhouses. It really does kind of give you a bit more farm to table type of a feel as opposed to simply growing tomatoes and taking them in town and selling them at a large industrial sell point. Now let me know what you all think down in the comments below with respect to what Giants has done with productions in Farming Simulator 25. I know productions was a bit of a debatable topic in 22, but it's either something that you're into or something you're not into. Let me know down in the comments below. And until next time, happy farming.